Hi everyone, it's Nicole Steele, the Joyful Stamper. I'm just going to pull up my page and refresh it so I can see comments of any of you that are joining me live today. So how is everyone? Oh, there I am with the volume turned down. Yay! Okay, it's always fun when everything goes right. Okay, so now I can see comments. So if you're joining me live, say hello, say where you're from. If you're watching the replay, thanks for joining me also. And feel free to make a comment, ask a question, because I do go back and look at them. So I decided to do face-to-face -face today. So yeah, um, I, I got ready. I figured it's, yeah, quarantine. The confessions of quarantine. Um, not taking showers every day, wearing hoodies and jeans for days on end, which happens to be my favorite outfit. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I went for a run about an hour ago and got cleaned up and I thought I'm going to go face to face because isn't that the loveliness of Facebook Live is we can uh, engage with each other, right? So, so demonstrators, they got to pre-order from the Stampin' Up! catalog today and I'm allowed to show you the cover of it so when I flip the camera down, actually I'll show it to you now. I can't open it up though. Not allowed to open it up. So, I will, this is the cover right here. This is the new Stampin' Up! catalog that has the new stamp sets. There's a lot that carried over too. So as a demonstrator, that makes me happy because I can still use the things that I already have, but there's a lot of new in there too, which I just ordered the new in colors this morning. The ink pads weren't ready, but I got the card stock. I got the ribbon. Um, I got the little embellishments. Uh, I can't remember what else. There is something else though, but what I'm doing is I'm running a special in the month of May. If you place a $50 order before shipping and tax in my online store, at shopwithnicole.stampinup.net, I will mail you out a new in color sampler pack. So ribbons, cardstock, that kind of thing. So you'll get to see the new in colors in person. Um, I have a reward code to use for that and I have it written on my desk here. So when I flip the camera down, you'll see it. But so that was the exciting thing for being a de um, for the demonstrators today. But we are gonna focus on some watercoloring today and I'm going to do the card, this card right here. I'm gonna do it start to finish so that you can see the whole process. I have not cut any of the paper. I haven't done any of the prep work ahead of time. So, and it's just this one card. So just sit back and relax and let's chat and ask questions, comments. And again, if you're just joining me, I am Nicole Steele of The Joyful Stamper. You can find me on the internet at thejoyfulstamper.com. And I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So I'm gonna flip the camera down now. So if you get sick, close your eyes, and then I'll let you know when you can open them again, okay? Here we go. All right, hopefully that was painless. And I have it centered. There we go. Okay, let me just move this down so that you know who I am and who you're watching, right? Okay, again, this is the card. I'll bring the catalog back in so you can see it. That's the cover of the new catalog. Stampin' Up! designed this catalog to appeal to a casual crafter. So there's lots of really pretty, really cute, very doable samples in this catalog. And I actually have a plan this year to case many of the samples in this catalog because I just, I love them so much. So watch for that. And I'm also going to do a catalog walkthrough. That is one of my favorite parts of going through a new catalog is thumbing through it with other people. So I will announce when that's going to happen. So this is the card we're going to make today. Lots and lots of details in this. My favorite kind of card to make. Favorite. Might seem a little fussy to some of you, but I promise you, you will be able to do this. You will. So what I'm going to do first is start with my card base and you'll see this is a portrait mode or a top folding card or a hot dog style card if you will and we are going to start with now this I already had done because um, I had it left over from cutting this card base but I will put this together so you can see it so if you're a beginner stamper 
this will be very helpful information for you. So as you can see, if I lay these two together, this is actually an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of cardstock. So eight and a half by 11 inches. And you can get two standard sized cards out of one sheet of cardstock, otherwise known as an A2 sized card. And what you do is you just cut it down the middle and you can cut it down the middle either this way at four and a quarter inches or you can cut it down the middle this way at five and a half inches. It doesn't matter, you'll get two standard size cards from each one. Now for this particular card, I cut down the middle at four and a quarter inches. So I'm left with a piece that's four and a quarter by 11 inches. And now I'm going to fold it in half. Well, the halfway mark of 11 inches is five and a half. So I'm gonna score it and fold it. Now don't worry about writing down all these measurements because I'm going to put them in the description to this video. So we're scoring with a bone folder at five and a half inches, and I'm using a scoreboard. Stamp, Stampin' Up! does sell a simply scored scoreboard, just like the one I used. So I've scored it, and now I'm gonna fold it in half. So I make a project sheet for every one of my Facebook Lives, and I post it, and it's got the measurements and all the supplies on there, along with a photo of the projects that I do and links if you want to order from me. So you don't have to worry about writing this stuff down. So we have our card base. Next up, I am going to pull out some pretty peacock cardstock, and I'm gonna cut it to five and three eighths by four and an eighth. Now this is not a Stampin' Up! trimmer, so don't send the Stampin' Up! police to get me. It's okay, I've had this trimmer since, um, well, for 20 years when I first started paper crafting, and it has served me well. So I'm still using it, but Stampin' Up! does sell a trimmer that um, a lot of people rave about. So if you don't have one already, you can get one through Stampin' Up. So what did I say? Um, four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So yes, um, yeah, I'm going rogue here because I haven't cut any of this ahead of time. So look, this is pretty much already five and three eighths. So I'm just gonna trim the little, little hair off of there. And then we'll go to four and an eighth, which is right here. I've got the pretty pink cards or pretty peacock cardstock. Next up is pool party, and I'm gonna cut it to the exact same size, five and three eighths by four and an eighth. Now the reason I'm cutting them both to the same size is because I am going to heavily crumple and distress these. So now we're doing four and an eighth, and they're gonna get mashed up pretty good. So it's okay that they're the same size, but feel free to cut the pool party one smaller if you want, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the watercoloring step to this one. And we are gonna use a set that is in the mini catalog and it's sadly retiring. It's called Breathtaking Bouquet and it is a background stamp. What a background stamp is, it's the size of a card front. So you can cover your entire card front with just this one stamp. They come cling mount, which is what this is, or this is sticky and will stick to your clear block or your stamparatus, or you can get it in wood mount in which it comes with a wood block that you can permanently mount it onto it. I have mine clear mount, and you know what? I actually just stick mine right to my stamp case like that. And I'm gonna use a Versamark ink pad, and I am going to tap it all over my background stamp, just like this. inking it up really, really good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pool party cardstock and I'm going to lay it on top of this background stamp like that. And I'm going to press it with my fingers so that all that ink transfers to the pool party cardstock, just like this. You could also take a piece of scratch paper, which mine's taped down, but if it, if it wasn't taped down, I could just lift my scratch paper up and push it um, and lay it on top of this and also apply pressure that way too. Okay, and then I'm gonna lift it up and you might not be able to see it, 
but the verse because the verse mark is a clear ink but the image is there and now I'm gonna take some white stamp and emboss powder and apply it to this image and it's a large image so I was telling you that we demonstrators got to pre-order today and that's one of the perks of being a demonstrator and not only did I get to pre-order but I got to buy everything at a 25% discount. So when you sign up as a demonstrator with my team of Joyful Stampers, you can get a discount of 20 to 25% on your future orders. And you can add the pre-order items to your starter kit today, right now. So if you were thinking of joining up, now is a really, really good time to sign up and get all those new goodies before the catalog officially goes live to everyone else. Now we're gonna use a heat tool to melt this and it's going to take a little bit of time for all the surface to melt so I just wanted to tell you too that when you join my team of my joyful stampers not only do you have access to my team page and all of my files and resources and classes but you also are part of the song of my heart stampers team and that is run by Lissa Zalonik. She's a top 100 demonstrator in the world, and she is the sweetest, sweetest, nicest woman. I love being on her team. I've been on her team for seven years now, and it's so fun. We have weekly challenges. Um, we have monthly challenges, both business and creative, and yours truly just added a monthly stamping event to our team page, and it's free. It's all just from signing up under me and being a Joyful Stamper um, team member. So think about it. Oh, I see I need to still melt some right here. Okay, there we go. I took that aside. So that was white stamp and emboss powder. Now you can, I'm sure you can see that image. Now see these large flowers right here? That's what we're gonna watercolor today. So I'm gonna grab an aqua painter and I'm gonna grab my pool party ink pad. And I'm gonna grab a pool party reinker. And I am going to squeeze a couple drops into the lid of my ink pad here. Now the pool, these aqua painters were on the retiring list and they did sell out, but that's only because they are being replaced by something new in the catalog. So in the new catalog, these types of um, brushes are going to still be in there where you fill, you unscrew the top and you fill the barrel with water and then you can just squeeze it and water will come out of the tip that way. No jar needed. Um, so in the cat new catalog, we're going to get a new set of these, but they're going to have three different brush tips, which is really nice because you'll be able to do all kinds of cool watercolor effects like washes and detailed. And Now what I'm doing today I promise you it's not fancy and it's not hard okay it's not so just pick up some color like that and I always like to have a paper towel nearby so that I can dab off the extra color and a check I'm gonna color watercolor these large flowers right here now I know technically you're supposed to use watercolor paper and we do carry that in my store fluid 100 watercolor paper but I'm not doing anything crazy here I'm not adding a ton of water. I'm not doing a wash or anything like that. I'm just adding color to these larger flowers here. So I'm not too concerned about my paper warping. And that's why you would use watercolor paper. If you're adding a large amount of water and doing a lot of watercoloring, the water will warp your cardstock. And that's why you need to use a thicker paper like watercolor paper. But I'm not doing a lot of it here. So it's okay to just use this regular cardstock. And I love the contrast of this white embossing powder against the Pool Party ink. Now this is stamped on Pool Party cardstock and I'm using Pool Party ink, but because I'm using the reinker, so it's straight up reinker, the color is so concentrated and vibrant that it's coming across darker. So let's add some more here. And you can go over, if you let it dry for a little bit, you can apply more layers of color to this for an even greater effect. So I do not pretend to be a watercoloring expert or artist. What I do call myself is a crazy, mad, passionate paper crafter who absolutely loves stamping up 
and creating cards and other paper crafting projects. And so because of that, I'm happy to teach other people what I know and to show them that you can do this. You don't have to be a Picasso or what other famous art artists are there, Da Vinci, nothing like that. You just, you just have to enjoy it and just play with it. This is playtime. This isn't about being perfect. It's about having fun. So, oh, I'm going to do that little area right there. Just like that. Just add some color. Oh my gosh, isn't that so pretty? And you can cover this whole panel if you want. You can do a different color if you want, but I chose to focus on just the larger flowers in this breath breathtaking bouquet background stamp. And I just like being able to highlight those. And you can just close your ink pad when you're done. There'll be extra ink maybe sitting in the lid, and that's okay. Just close it. And I'm going to clean my aqua painter by squeezing out a little bit of water and brushing it on the paper towel until it comes out clear. And then I can set that aside, put the cap on and set it aside. This can dry. Um, you could use your heat tool, but the thing with that is you would remelt that embossing powder. And I don't want to do that, so I'm going to set this aside and do some die cutting and emboss, dry embossing while we're waiting for this piece to dry, okay? So we'll put that over there. And we are going to bring back a scrap piece of Cajun Craze, a scrap piece of vellum, and um, let me see what else I'm doing here. A piece, uh, or my in my cut piece of um, pretty peacock cardstock. Okay, so let me make sure this is the one that I cut. Yes, it is. It wasn't just a scrap. Okay, so we're gonna do some embossing and die cutting of this. Let me pull out my cuddle bug and also I have exciting news when it comes to die cutting machines okay Stampin' Up in its new catalog is going to have both a mini and a full size die cutting machine embossing machine it will this is not it this is my 17 year old cutter cuddle bug okay so this is not it but in the new catalog they're going to show it and they haven't told us exactly when it's going to be available but it will be in the catalog Okay, let me find my embossing folder. Here it is. Okay, so I'm using the Ornate Floral 3D Embossing Folder. And I'm going to put my pretty peacock cardstock in there and close it. And with my particular cuddle bug, I'm going to have a base plate. And this is pretty standard for any die cutting machine. And I have my cutting plate, which is this is my B plate. And I'm going to put my embossing folder in there that has the cardstock in it. Now, with my particular machine, <laughs> I have to use another embossing folder to run this through to give it the proper pressure. The new Stampin' Up! die cutting machine will have a plate. It will have an actual plate for you to put on top of that. And now I've embossed that piece. You know what? I realized I forgot to turn on my light. There we go. That should be better now. Okay, so we have that embossed piece. Now what I'm going to do is take this piece of Cajun Craze cardstock and put it on my plate, and I'm going to use Parisian dies. And there's a particular one in there that is a scroll. This one right here. And I'm going to die cut that out of Cajun Craze cardstock. Now this one, I am gonna put my C plate on top and I'm gonna run it through. These are called sandwiches. This combination of these plates. In the new Stampin' Up! Um, in the new Stampin' Up! machine, all the plates are gonna be numbered. So that when they, announce, when they say what sandwich to make, you'll know exactly what it is because the plates will have the numbers on them so you'll know what to use. So there's our little scroll. I'll set that aside. And now we're going to die cut this fancy vellum layer I have on my card. And for that one, we are going to use the ornate layer set right here. And I'm going to use this particular die right here. And we're die cutting that out of vellum. And let me go grab a dryer sheet. I've shown this trick before, but because this is such a detailed die, this dryer sheet will make um, all these little pieces that get die cut out, it'll make it stick 
to the dryer sheet and I'll be able to just peel my die cut away. So I'll put my plate on top and I'll run it through. Okay, take that die off and I will show you. This is vellum so it's kind of hard but most of those little pieces are going to peel right off and stick to that and whatever doesn't I'm just going to give it a little wiggle and the rest of them will fall right out. Now we also have a dye brush that you can run over this to get all those little pieces out, but I'll be honest, I don't fuss with getting every single last piece out. Life's too short. There's a lot of stamps to use and it's just too short to be picking out every tiny little piece. So between the dryer sheet and just going with it, I'm good. Okay. Let me get all the rest of my pieces here. Okay, so I've die cut all those pieces. Now we are going to put the card together. So we have our Cajun Craze card base. Now here's where for me the fun comes in. I'm gonna rough this up. So I just take these edges and just go like this and really crumple it up. Scrunch it in. And if it happens to tear a little bit, that's okay. It's just gonna add to it. Okay, and once you have it rough, roughed up like this, you can apply some glue and stick this down onto your card base. And just stick it down like that. And as I'm holding it down, I'm gonna further distress it. So your fingernails come in handy for that. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this piece. Now, if you wanna trim it down a little bit more, you can do that too. And this one, I really, really crumpled. And I initially like to go around like this. And then what I like to do is go ahead and glue it onto my card. And then I'll further. Do I have it on the right way? Yes. And then what I'll do is I'll further crumple this up. Really just go to town on this. I think the reason I like this technique so much is because it's you just you can't get it wrong. Just crumple what you, if you don't like the size of it, go ahead and tear some pieces off. It's all good. Oh, this is looking beautiful to me. This is looking beautiful to me. I, I love that. This side needs a little bit more. Oh, that, yes. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Okay, now this little scroll is going to get glued to the vellum. So let me get some fine tip glue. This is pretty skinny, so I need this fine tip here to attach it to that vellum. And I'm just going to put little dabs of it all along this scroll at the tip. And you just want to squeeze lightly so that it doesn't come out in a big blobby mess. Okay. And I'll put that right on that die cut vellum piece like that. And if you want, you can take a block to put some pressure on it to give it a few seconds to adhere. Okay. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to take a piece of Whisper White cardstock and I am using the sentiment here. Follow your heart, it will take you to incredible places. And it's from the Parisian Beauty stamp set. Now this stamp set and the dies where this scroll came from, that bundle's retiring. And, and when I say the bundle's retiring, I mean the stamp set and the dies are, are going away after June, 3rd, after June 2nd. And the breathtaking bouquet background stamp is also retiring on June 2nd. So if you like those, make sure you order them now. Okay. And I'm going to stamp it right in the middle so I can give myself room to play with this. 
And yes, I can tell that's a little bit crooked, but it's okay. All right, we'll let that dry for a couple seconds. I think this block can be removed. Yep, and now we're going to attach this to the front of our card just like this. And I used vellum so that you could still see that pretty watercoloring um, come through. That's what's so nice about vellum, it's translucent. So if you have a design that you don't wanna hide or maybe you're using designer series paper that's really just a little too busy for your taste, you can use vellum to either let the design show through or to tone it down. It has a lot of good uses. Very, very versatile medium to work with. So I highly recommend having a pack of vellum in your stamping arsenal. Now this is a little bit wider than I want, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim it down. Pull my trimmer back out. You can also use scissors too which I actually think I might use my scissors. So let me get them out. These ones right here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and cut as close to my sentiment as I could get. Now the exact measurement I remember using is three and a half inches long by half an inch wide. So you can cut your Whisper White cardstock to that before you even stamp it. I just chose to pull up scrap here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is tear this side and I'm going to tear a little bit on this side and I'm going to roll it a little bit with my fingers. See, your fingers can be stamping tools too. Did you know that? Okay, just give that a little bit of curl. Just more distressing, right? More distressing. And I'm going to add dimensionals to the back of that. Let me find some here in my adhesive drawer. Do you guys have an adhesive drawer? You should. Then you'll never run out. Ever, ever. Um, actually, I don't want to attach this yet. So I peeled the liner off, but I don't want to attach it yet because I want to put some ribbon on this. This ribbon is also retiring, and this I am deeply sad about. It is petal pink metallic edge ribbon, and the metallic that's on the edge is champagne. So I'm going to wrap this around my card base on a diagonal and I'm going to wrap it twice. So there's once and there's twice. And then I'm going to cut it. Um, let me see here. Yes, like this. And I'm tying it in a bow and my original bow was big and loopy. And I thought it looked really nice. Oh, there we go. Oh my gosh. This is coming together so nicely. Let me trim this part down. Ow, a little bit. Don't want to cut my fingers. Okay. Got that. I love how it's on the diagonal too. I'm going to adjust it a little bit. There we go. It's just, it just, I don't know. It's kind of unexpected and interesting, I think. Okay, now I'm going to add the sentiment. So I'm going to sort of tuck it underneath that part right there. And I'm going to tuck it. Whoop, there we go. I'm going to tuck it underneath that ribbon just like that and put it on there like that. Now for the finishing touch, I'm going to add some of these champagne rhinestone basic jewels. These, I'm happy to say, are returning to the annual catalog. They are not going away. And they've been on back order actually for quite a while and they're finally back in stock when I checked right before this live. So I'm going to add one of the larger ones. They come in three sizes in the same within the same pack. So I'm going to take the largest champagne rhinestone and I'm just going to add it right by the sentiment there. But I'm not done. I'm going to add another rhinestone right in the middle of that little swirl. I'm going to take the medium sized rhinestone and I'm just going to add that right there too. And now this card is done. Wasn't that easy? Not much to it. And I did this, I did the card from the very, um, very start. I didn't cut anything ahead of time. So you can see that this doesn't take very long to make and it's relaxing and you can stamp a bunch of these backgrounds and you could watercolor them as you watch your favorite TV show or while you're listening to music. Um, you know, have, have a cup of tea nearby, experiment with different colors of cardstock and ink. That'd be really fun, a fun way to spend an evening or an afternoon. So but remember, um, with every $50 that, or with a $50 order in my store, shopwithnicole.stampinup.net, 
use this reward code and I will send you a new in color sample pack. I have cardstock, I have ribbon, um, I have some embellishments and I'll pop one of those in a new catalog package for you. So that is my thank you to you with your $50 order in my store. So um, I'm so thankful for you for joining me today. Please be sure to share this video if you enjoyed what you saw. I so, so appreciate it. And I will catch you guys next Tuesday. All right, thank you, bye.